there's a blessed time it's coming coming soon well it may be big morning or at noon oh the wedding of the bride united with the groom oh we shall see the king when he comes oh we shall see the king we shall see the king oh we shall see the king when he See the king when he comes. Are you ready? Should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, Well done, or go away? Oh, my home is for the pure, the vow can never stay. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the King when He comes. For oh, He is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the King when He comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? Oh, to crown your Savior, King and Lord of all. All the kingdoms of this world shall soon before Him fall. We shall see. I'll be looking forward to that day. Amen, amen. Oh, we shall see the King. Hallelujah. We shall see the King. Oh, we shall see the King when He comes. Oh, He is coming in power. Well, hail the blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the King when He comes. Oh, there's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. see the king praise the lord praise the lord and we shall see the king we shall see the king oh we shall see the king when he comes oh he is coming in power we'll hail the blessed hour oh we shall see the king oh sing it one more time hallelujah and we shall see the king we shall see the king oh we shall see the king when he comes oh he is coming in power we're going to hail the blessed hour oh i oh, got to sing it one more time hallelujah there's a king coming church and we shall see the king hallelujah glory the king is coming church I gotta sing verse one again, folks. I tell the king is coming. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. And it may be evening, morning, or afternoon. Oh, the wedding of the bride, united with the groom. And we shall see the king. Hallelujah. Sing it out this morning, church. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he is coming in power. We'll hail the blessed hour. And we shall see the king when he comes. Give the Lord a hang up of praise this morning. We're going to see him, church. I said we're going to see the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Are you ready? Are you anticipating? Are you looking for? Are you excited about His imminent return? You too quiet on me, church. I said, are you excited about the imminent return of Christ Jesus? Hallelujah! Oh, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Oh, power in the blood. And would you?
this morning. Thankful for that precious blood this morning. What can wash away Oh, precious is the 
this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your mighty name, Lord. We thank you for that precious flow, that precious crimson flow this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sing for Sister Brenda. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou
Just as I am without one plea, let them by blood shed for me, and let them be Beverly Shea would close out <clears throat> the meetings by the great Billy Graham after a sermon that was so graciously given of the grace of God George Beverly Shea would step up to the podium he'd begin to sing just as I am the cameras would start panning the coliseums. People in the balconies just by droves. By the droves. Would come and fill those floors of the stadiums. Multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes. People would come just as they were. And the good news, they were accepted by Jesus. <laughs> I remember the day that I walked down the aisle, just as I was, an old sinner. But thank God his arms were extended, Brother Kevin. Thank God she told her, Thank God his hands were outreached to me and accepted me and took me was broken in despair and broken and nothing to offer. But he took me and he welcomed me into his care. He welcomed me into the very presence of his, of his glory. How many here this morning can say, thank God you took me. 
You accepted me just as I was. You took me. Woo, lift your hands toward heaven this morning. And let's just give praise to God with a spirit of thanksgiving. Thank God. Father, we thank you. God, for your saving grace. Lord, that saved an old wretch like me this morning. Father, you took us. Lord, all we had was brokenness. Lord, all we had was vile and evil and corruptness of heart. But Lord, you took us and you claimed us as your own. As a son of God, as a child of God, as a daughter of God. Lord, you welcomed us into the family. You welcomed us into the very family of God. Father, we stand in awe this morning. Lord, as the Apostle Paul said these words, it's an unspeakable gift. The unspeakable gift. Words cannot even begin to describe such wonderful salvation, such wonderful gift of eternal life that came from a holy God to a sinful people. But Jesus, it was because of your love because of your love, Lord, that you went to that old rugged cross. Lord, and you gave your life a ransom. You gave your life a ransom for all humanity. Lord, we stand here today still proclaiming, Whosoever will, let him call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will, let him come for the cleansing power, cleansing flow of the precious blood of Jesus that you may wash away our sins. Father, we bless you and we love you for it. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. Lord, bless this service today. Bless this sermon that we're about to hear. Prepare the hearts, Lord. Prepare the hearts, Lord. Prepare the word. Prepare the messenger. Father, we love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Children of church, you can be dismissed. Praise the Lord. I love you this morning, church. I love you. We're going to make it, amen. We're going to make it this morning as people are, people are hungry for God. We're seeing a mighty hunger across our nation, folks. I want Yale Assembly to be involved. <laughs> I don't want us to be bypassed. I don't want us to be looked over. I don't want us to sit idle. But I want Yale Assembly to be involved in what God is doing in this last day and hour. In order for that to happen, we need to be, we need to be activated by His Holy Spirit and prompted by the Holy Ghost this morning to, to, to be about soul winning today, to be about souls and to be about the church of getting the church ready. I would like to take you this morning to the book of Luke, the 19th chapter. The book of Luke, the 19th chapter this morning, if you would. Just for a few moments, I want to speak on the subject. I want to title this morning's message, The Encounter. The Encounter. The Lord began to deal with my heart late in the week. Begin to take me to this and begin to stir in my spirit about a man by the name of Zacchaeus. We've sung about Zacchaeus in our children's church. We've sung it when I was a kid that Zacchaeus was a wee little man. The wee little man was he. We've taught the story many, many times of who Zacchaeus was. And, but we want to look at the story again this morning. We want to give the Lord our undivided attention as we glean from these precious words that Dr. Luke has recorded for us today. As they were singing that song, Just As I Am, I said, why are we going to wait till the end to give an altar call? Let's go ahead and give it right now. Amen. I'm glad that we can come to the Lord at any time, at any moment, at any place. The Lord is so real. My heart has been so heavy over the earthquakes in Syria and Turkey. And the last I heard, it may have gone up by now, but the last I heard was over 41,000 people has died. Folks, I can't help but to think, where did they go? 
Where did they go? Where are they going to spend eternity? <laughs> 41,000 people in just a couple weeks' time have slipped into eternity. My heart has been heavy. In our funeral home this week, we had a 12-year-old boy. 12-year-old boy. He went to church last Wednesday night. The youth pastor was there. And he walked up to him and he says, he said, do you know Jesus? He said, no. He said, would you like to know him? He said, yes. He said, I need Jesus. I need to be saved. Little did he know, little did the family know at the next morning in the early hours that he would be called home. Church, there's a 12-year-old boy that could have split hell wide open. But because there was a youth pastor there that went up to him and said, Do you know Jesus? He led him in a sinner's prayer and he said, I accept. Church, let me tell you, life is so fragile. We are not promised another breath. We're not promised another moment in time. It is so, so important. And if we think that we're invincible, honey, you need a wake-up call because none of us are invincible when it comes to death. We're all in need of a, a Savior this morning. we are all been born into inherent sin. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. There is none perfect, no, not one, but Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful for his love for humanity today that he has come to reach down and save and conceal and con continuing, continuing to save the sinner this morning. Aren't you thankful for that, folks? I'm trying to give you some hope today. The devil would like to lie to you and say, There is, there is no hell, there is no heaven. But let me tell you, I want to remind you this morning, there is a heaven and there is a hell today. There is a heaven and there is a real hell. And we look at the story of Zacchaeus, the 19th chapter today. And as I said, I want to title this morning's message, The Encounter. The Encounter. Let's begin reading in chapter 19, verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. That is a twofold verse there that is a twofold verse Jesus entered and Jesus passed through when you look at the relevancy of the time timetable that Luke was recording this Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem the Passover is now just a few days away when he would become the Passover when he would become the great propitiation sacrifice and he would give his life on the cross so Jesus knows that his days are numbered he knows that his time is short before he goes and pays the ransom for all of humanity so as you can see he is passing through Jerusalem or passing through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. So he comes into this place here known as Jericho. So there he enters Jericho. And as Jesus enters the streets of Jericho in verse 2, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich he was the chief tax collector as he worked for the Roman government the people's look outlook upon Zacchaeus was one that was very bitterly they considered him one of corruptness they considered him one of disdain he was despised by the people because he had gotten rich at the people's expense. 
whatever he could gain from the people, he did. He got very wealthy and he was very rich and so the people had animosity that was against him. So the people were very much bitter. And if you look in verse 7, just skip down just a little bit, it says this right here. That the people, even in the community, called him a sinner. That's what the people, they pulled no punches. They addressed the fact that he was a thief, he was corrupt, and he was a sinner. We see the story begins to unfold and the people in the neighborhood is grumbling. And, and we see here in verse 3, but Zacchaeus, he did something that was out of the ordinary. He did something that was different. He sought to see Jesus. No doubt he had heard a testimony. No doubt he had heard things that had been spoken about him, about his miracles. I was preaching in the gospel and his teachings that were anything unlike anyone ever heard before. He had heard these different testimonies, so he decided that he wanted to see Jesus for himself. See, I just want to remind you this morning, there is a difference between knowing about God and knowing God. There is a difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus. There's many people that have heard about him, but knowing him is the ultimate goal. Having a relationship. I'm glad, that, I'm glad that Jesus is not a religious Savior, but he's a Savior that is concerned about a relationship with mankind. So Zacchaeus, he sought to see Jesus who he was. What a statement. I just want to see, this is not just a soul winning sermon this morning but this also has to do with the saints that are already saved because there should be a continuation in our hearts and in our life today that we want to know who Jesus is more as Paul said I, I, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection there should be a hunger on the inside of us to press in and go the extra mile and say Jesus I just want to know you more Lord, I'm hungry for you. Lord, I get this, the, the, the elements of the world that are pulling me and are, they're tugging on my heart and they're ravaging my mind with different thoughts and the, the character and the culture of our nation is bombarding me. Church, there's a cross and there's a Savior that we can go to this morning that will help us as the body of Christ to become stronger and become more resilient in this day and hour. We know that we're living in difficult times. We know we're living in perilous times. But we're not the world, church. We're the church. We're the kingdom of God today. We're living in the realm of his presence and in his Shekinah glory. We're not to act like the world. We're to come out and and be different and look different and act different this morning. When you got the joy of the Lord that is our strength today, remind yourself, David, when, all, when, his, when he lost his wives and children, he said he encouraged himself in the Lord. We as a church, we need to be encouraging ourselves this morning. Are you hearing me, church? We need to be encouraging ourselves in the Lord this morning. Glory to God. So he sought, he sought to see Jesus who he was. Man, that's a powerful statement. But he could not, for the press, for the crowd that was so, oh, hallelujah. Wouldn't that be awesome? You want to get close to Jesus and you can't because there's so many other people that are ahead of you surrounding you. Wouldn't that be a beautiful sight this morning that you're trying to get to the altar and you can't because two people already beat you there? Wouldn't it, wouldn't, it be a, wouldn't it be an awesome thing that we're trying to get into the prayer room and we can't even get past the door because so many people have already gathered themselves in the prayer room seeking the face of God and you can't even get inside because people are on their knees and they're crying saying, God, we want more of you. Church, I'm trying to stir you this morning. I'm trying to stir you this morning. I'm trying to encourage you this morning. 
He said he could not because he was of little stature. Verse 4. But he did something. He did something to altercate the, 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 when you can't do something, you don't stop. You just try to find another way to get there. So he found an alternate route. and He ran. He ran. Can I get an amen? amen? He ran. Church, when is the last time that we ran to the altar? When is the last time we ran to the prayer meeting? When is the last time we ran into the presence of God? It was something he never had in his life. He was void. He was empty. He, 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 he said, I've heard about Jesus. What is all this commotion? What is all this fuss about? Why is everybody so excited? Why is everybody going to see him by the droves and by the multitudes? He wanted to find out for himself. Church, there's some things you just got to find out for yourself. You got to find out for yourself. He ran before. He took action. He took a personal, personal action here. Yeah. He ran before. I love that. And that wasn't enough. He said, I've got to go the extra mile. I can't, I can't just seem because I'm running, but I've got to take another step. Am I preaching this morning, folks? Sometimes you've got to take another step to get more of Jesus in your life. So he climbed up into a sycamore tree, not just for the fun of it, not just to say he could do it, but he climbed up with purpose. What was his purpose? Oh, come on, church. He said, I got to climb up this tree. I got to get around the crowd somewhere. I got to get over the crowd. I got I to gotta get here. It was something driving him on the inside that he had to have more. He had to find out. He climbed up that old sycamore tree that he may get a glimpse of the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That healed the palsy, that healed the leper, the one that caused the lame to see, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and the deaf to hear. Come on, somebody. He had a purpose in himself that was driving him. I got to get to the sea. I got to get to the man who, who parted the seed, who walked upon Galilee. He ran before and he climbed to see him because he had heard. Because he had heard that Jesus was going to pass that way on that particular day in that particular time. Church, there's an opportunity and there's a window that we have to enter into. And if we don't, we might miss it. That's why he tells the scriptures, he said, today, 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 today is the hour of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. There's windows of opportunity that we must take in. And so he had heard heard that Jesus, you know, I got to ask the question. If the people in Yale knew that Jesus was going to be passing by today, how many would come out of their homes and go see him? If Jesus was going to be our personal speaker today, how many people would get out of their recliners, put forth an effort to drive get in their vehicle and drive to yell assembly and say, we want to hear him speak today? I've just got to ask. I'm not asking, really asking for an answer. i just got to ask the question. How many would say, well, I've got a new wife. I've got to stay home and take care of her. Well, I just bought a new piece of property, and I've got to go check it out. I just bought me some new cattle and some new sheep, and I got to go see how they're going to plow. Hello, we can make every kind of excuse to do anything else in the world, but we seem to can't find the right time to get in the house of God and begin to seek the face of God and begin to fall on our knees and begin to repent. Come on, somebody, and begin to be a people of repentance and start seeking the face of God. Because he knew that Jesus was passing that way today. He took forth the effort. He took forth the time. He set aside the time of his personal life 
I think what was going on in Zacchaeus' mind was, I'm unhappy. I'm tired of being called the chief sinner in my community. I'm tired of being a thief. I'm tired of being known of a corrupt person in my community. I think the bitterness of sin had gotten down into his heart. He said, I've got all this money. I've got all this money. And people know that I'm worth. I live, at the, I live in the big house on the hill. And I, I drive the, the, the nicest chariot in town. i got the prettiest horses to pull it. Yet I'm unhappy. There's a lot of people that are wealthy, but they're so unhappy. I remember, I remember Brother Daryl Larson. I was with him in Oklahoma City one day. And we was going through... Uh, was going through the West, West Oklahoma City area after the Mercy Hospital. I think they call that uh, Gala, 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 I don't call it Galleria. You know what? The, it's, 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 it's the elite of the elite of the elite lives in that community. I don't think there's a home under a million dollars. Just unreal unreal community, the houses, the homes that you drive by and just see, you just see, you just smell money, you see money, you, it, it grows on trees, it's just, and I'm driving by with Brother Daryl and Gallardia, I believe it's called Gallardia, and we're driving by on those streets and I'm driving and Brother Daryl's sitting over there and he's just looking, he's looking at all those homes and they're grander. Now you got to think Brother Daryl didn't have a TV in his house. Still have the same old green shag carpet it was built with. It's because he chose. But we, as we drove along, I, drove, I just drove kind of slow. I just kind of slowed down. I knew, he was, I knew he was thinking. And finally, we got toward the end of the street. and He turned to me and he says, Big homes. Empty lives. Big homes, but empty lives. Folks, I'm going to tell you this morning, wealth and riches will not make a man happy. You can have all the good things in life, the finest of clothes. You can have all that. But there was a man, Zacchaeus. He said, I'm not happy. So I've got to run, and I've got to find out more about this Jesus that wants to give me peace, that wants to give me joy in my life. There's so many people that are unhappy. They're corrupt. Their mind, their, their mind is corrupt. And the God of this world has blinded their minds and they're living in darkness. So in verse 5, and when Jesus came to the place, you would underline that, Aren't you glad that Jesus came to the place where you were? Aren't you glad that Jesus took time to come to the very place where you were? It's not so much that I found Jesus, it was that Jesus found me. He came looking for me. He came looking. He was on his way to Jerusalem. He was on his way. He knew what was coming. At least I got to stop off at Jericho today. Just like the woman at the well. I must needs. I must needs. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm glad that he found a need. He had a need to stop by Jericho. Or he had a need to stop by Fanshawe, Oklahoma that day. Because there was an old sinner boy who needed to know Jesus. Jesus came by that day. And Jesus came to the place. My Lord, that's Holy Ghost good. And when Jesus got there, he wasn't just looking around. He had purpose. Somebody say the purpose of Jesus. Jesus has got purpose. And he said, when he got to the tree, when he, when he got to the place, he looked up. And he saw Zacchaeus. Now let me just pause here for a moment. And I want you to just get your, let me just. Paint you a picture. Here is a full grown man, leader in the community, finest attire, finest clothes, wealthy rich man, sitting up in the middle of a tree. And, and this is interesting to me. 
but I did some research. In the customs, in the customs of that time, the culture of that time, this is what it said. It was a shame for a full-grown man to be sitting up in a tree. I can agree to that. But it was a shame. It was, it, they considered that as a low-class event, you know. But here, here's Zacchaeus setting up in the midst of this sycamine tree. And Jesus just happened, I don't know, he just didn't happen to look up. He came with purpose. He felt the need to stop at Jericho. How many are glad he stopped on the day you got saved? He could have passed by like the thief and the, uh, like the, like the Levite and the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the Pharisee. But like the good Samaritan, he stopped by and he poured in the oil and he poured in the wine and he bandaged you up and he began to take care of you. He began to pick you up and put you on his own beast and he took you to town. Come on, somebody. I'm glad the good Samaritan came by and stopped when I was beaten and robbed and left for dead. Jesus just happened to pass by, Lord, my Lord. He passed by and he looked up and he saw Zacchaeus. Here's where the story gets good. Zacchaeus! Let me tell you something. Jesus knows your address. He knows your location. And he knows your name. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you had for breakfast this morning. He knows everything about you, inside, upwards, and downwards, and backwards, and forward. He knows, every, he knows you better than you know yourself. He walked up and he said, Zacchaeus, make haste. I mean, hurry. I mean, get in the car. Come on. Get your dry goods on. Come on. He said, make haste. And then he said these words. And come down. Do you think Zacchaeus had really planned on that? He just wanted to see him. He just maybe wanted to hear, get a personal glimpse of who he was. But what happened? He had a personal encounter with the Messiah that day. Hallelujah! Woo! Glory to God. When you start asking God for things, honey, he'll give you more than what you start asking for. He'll overflow you. He'll overfill you with everlasting joy. Ooh, my Lord, my Lord. He said, Zacchaeus, make haste, hurry up, and come down. What do you think old Zacchaeus did? Do you think he shimmied down that tree? And then he said these words, Zacchaeus, today I'm coming to your house. You talk about an encounter an encounter with the child of God, with the Son of God. He said, come now for today, I look at the word, I must, I must abide at thy house. Look what happened, verse 6. Zacchaeus said, ah, uh, well, Lord, I'm kind of busy today. I've got a shopping list. I've got to go to get these groceries in today. I've got to run this errand. I've got to go by the cleaners. I've got to pick the kids up at school today. You know, it's Sunday, Lord. We always have family day. And laundry is Sunday. It's my only day of rest. I work six days a week, and Sunday's my only day at rest. I know. I went to Medlin. I know. But it seemed like there's a hundred different things we can do only on Sunday. Six days a week and we can't get it done, but we got to do it on Sunday. No, Zacchaeus said, not today, because the master's calling my name. Not today, but the master came for me. He wants to see me. He wants to spend time with me. Today. Oh, hallelujah, church. I said, the master wants to spend time with you today. He's called your name. He said, I'm going to come home with you. Somebody get happy in this place this morning. Verse 6 says, And Zacchaeus made haste, and he came down out of that old sycamine tree, and he received him joyfully. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, <laughs> and when the crowd, when the Jews saw what happened, 
they all murmured, grumbled, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Thank God. Let them murmur. Let them grumble. I'm still thankful that Jesus comes to sip with the wine bibbers and they still come to eat with those who are hungry this morning. I'm still glad that God has a fellowship with the sinner this morning, with the drug addict, with the alcoholic, them that don't skid row. Jesus still makes an appearance so that every man, woman, and child can have their own personal encounter with Christ. Thank God. Thank God. He's no respecter of persons. Zacchaeus receding joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured. Verse 8 said, and Zacchaeus stood. Can you imagine standing there face to face with the master, the great teacher, the fulfillment of the word? Zacchaeus face to face with the Son of God. Church, how would you act? How would you respond at that encounter today? Zacchaeus, nose to nose, and in Zacchaeus' house, nonetheless, stood and he said to the Lord, he said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. What happened? What happened at that moment? There was a change of heart. There was a change that took place in Zacchaeus' life. He was a sinner, but church, he would become a saint at that very moment. See, when Christ comes into your life and Christ begins to get a hold of you, and you repent of yours, how many remember today you repented of your past sins? Repentance takes place. And then after repentance, there is going to be a renewal process. There's a renewing of your mind. There's a renewing of your attitude. There's a renewing of your heart. There's a renewing of your character. There is a renewing of your speech. There is a renewing of your talk. There's a renewing of your walk. Because once you encounter Christ, there is no way possible that you can remain the same. Because he said you're a new creation. There's a renewal that takes place called the rebirth, called the born-again experience. If you go back and look at another encounter, you'll find a guy by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was the high priest, or the priest, a a a respected Pharisee, I should say, rather. But he came by Jesus that night because he didn't want nobody to see him. He said, how can a man be born again? This is in John, the third chapter. How can a man be born again? Jesus said these words, unless a man be born of the water and born of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Folks, a rebirth experience is necessary in order to make it to heaven. You cannot get to heaven on your own. You are in need of a Savior. I was standing at the graveside of of a, of a family not long ago. And as usual, I didn't know them and they didn't know me. And I said, this may be the last time I ever see these people again. <laughs> and I told them these words. I said, family, I'm going to tell you this because, number one, I love you. And number two, I care about you. I said, I'm going to say this truthfully out of love. But I said, hear me right now, people. We're standing around the graveside. I said, if you don't know Jesus, either you're going to meet him as Savior or you're going to meet him as judge. Folks, I know those are harsh at a funeral, but at that time at a funeral, that's when it seemed like your hearts are pretty receptive about the eternity. But know this this morning, either people is going to meet him as Savior, which I plan on it, but there's going to be some who's going to meet him as judge, who's going to face the wrath of God, who's going to meet the condemnation of of death eternal, what's known as the second death. Zacchaeus made a choice. He made a decision that day to be born again, to have a rebirth experience as he encountered Christ in his life. Not only is there going to be repentance, there's going to be renewal, there's going to be a rebirth, 
But there's going to be a refreshing. When the Holy Spirit comes in your life and he begins to renew you, there's going to be a spirit of refreshing take over in you. And honey, you're going to see people different. You're going to act different. You're going to walk different. You're going to, the sky's going to be bluer. The grass is going to be greener. You're going to have a new spring in you. And you're going to love everybody. You're going to love your enemies. You're going to walk down and say, I'm so sorry, brother. I just love you. Forgive you. Whatever. Because the Christ is now living and abiding on the inside of you. And Christ is showing himself to them old friends you had. And they're going to say, what happened to you? And your response is, I had an encounter with Jesus. I had an encounter with Jesus. And, man, I've been born again. I've been refreshed. I've been renewed. And lastly, there's going to be a time of restoration. Restoration means, I love this definition, to make better than their current state. <laughs> That's what Christ does. He takes that old stony heart. He said, in fact, Ezekiel said, I'm going to take out that old stony heart. And I'm going to remove that old cold, hard, stony heart of sin, black heart. But I'm going to replace it with a heart of flesh. I'm going to replace it with something soft. And I'm going to replace it with something that I, that's pliable. And I'm going to replace it with something that's tangible. Something that I can mold and shape. And I'm going to restore you. Aren't you glad you've been restored this morning? Hallelujah. Somebody shout with me this morning. Thank God he renews, he restores but first, there has to be a repentance. Jesus, when Jesus came preaching in the starting of his ministry, first thing he said was, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Church, we need to repent. Well, pastor, I've been saved all my life. You need to repent. Pastor, I'm a deacon. Repent. Well, pastor, I'm the preacher. Repent. If we want a revival, we need to repent. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven and will heal their land. Come on, somebody. We need to repent it. We need to repent it. Repentance will bring revival. Repentance will bring restoration. Repentance will bring reformation. Restoration. It happened in his life when he says, I'm going to restore fourfold. He realized, he realized, he realized, he realized. Just like the man and living in the pig pen, the prodigal son, he come to his senses. He said, man, I blew it. I blew it. When he came to his senses, he said, Lord, I've robbed the people. I've extortioned. I've lied. I've thieved from them. I've robbed from them. I'm going to pay them back four times as much as I for. Only God could put that in their heart to make things right. That's what Ezekiel Zechariah felt like he needed to do. Come on, somebody. Yeah. There's things in our life when God deals with us. There's things that we need to do. I'm going to give you a verse. I'm going to give you a verse. I was going to hold off on this, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Isaiah 1 and 19. Look it up. Write it down. Isaiah 1 19. I was going to hold off on this, but I'm going to give it to you. He says, Isaiah 1 and 19. He says, if you be willing, I'm going to say willing, and if you be obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. I got a question that I've been, this has been on my heart. God's been dealing with me on this scripture for two weeks. Can't eat, can't sleep. Well, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> but it's been on my mind. It has been on my heart. I just can't get away from it. If you be willing. How many of us say, Lord, I'm willing? Lord, I am willing. I've left it all. Lord, I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing. But how many of us are going to be obedient? 
Many of us are going to be obedient, but not willing. Lord, I'll do it, but I ain't going to like it. I'll go, but I won't have, I won't have a good time at it. I'll mow the yard, but I'm going to hate every strap of it. Lord, I'll give the $20, but I ain't happy about it. You know what I've been dealing with for two weeks now? Holy Spirit is searching our hearts. Let me put that again. The Holy Spirit is searching our hearts today to find out if we're going to be both willing and obedient. Because if we're not, we'll never eat the good of the land. That the benefit, the benefit is eating the good of the land, but you've got to be willing and you've got to be obedient. Yeah. All that in a bag of chips and they cost you nothing this morning. But let the Lord start dealing with you on that particular subject. Help me bear the burden here, would you? Say, Lord, pray for my pastor. <laughs> it's easy sometimes to be obedient, but sometimes the willing side of it is difficult. But there may be some that's willing, but yet the obedient side is difficult. They're just like brothers. They go hand in hand. But we struggle because of the flesh. We struggle because there's a battle going on between the flesh and of the, of the spirit man going on. There's a battle going on in our mind that's pulling us to and fro. But Zacchaeus, he said, I'm going to renew. He was obedient because he felt like God had stirred something and said, i got to make things right. Because that's what happens when you start serving God and living for God. You start doing things that are pleasing unto the Lord. You start wanting to please the Lord instead of pleasing yourself. In verse 9, and Jesus said unto him, what a glorious statement. Zacchaeus, this day. This day, Brother Kevin. Aren't you glad you had a this day in your life? Aren't you glad you can remember back? I was 16 years old. I've told this a hundred times, but I like telling it. I was 16 years old. Sitting in Yellow Assembly of God Church in Fancho, Oklahoma, had a pair of flated out blue jeans on, green and white striped shirt, a pair of gray ropers on, looking sharp. <laughs> January the 12th, my grandpa preached the message that morning that changed my life. I got up about what about where Sister Patty's sitting. I got up and I walked that old aisle. I met my grandpa at the altar. He led me in the sinner's prayer. Let me tell you folks, I had an encounter that morning that has forever changed my life. It was not a fad. It was not just something, well, it was, it was something you ate. No, there was something that needed to be done and I did it. Folks, there's some things we need to do this morning and we need to do it. Hello? I'm preaching this morning, folks. There's something that all of us need to do this morning. Not just the sinner, but the church this morning, but the church this morning. And there's some things that we need to deal with in our own personal lives. And Jesus said, this day is salvation. Come to this house. I'm so thankful this morning. I, it, it doesn't say this, but any time you pretty much see the word house, that pretty much means household. Rahab and her household. Joshua, as far as me and my house. It pretty much means all the family lives in that house. As the jailer, as Paul and Silas, the jailer in all of his house got saved that day, I can't help but think that Zacchaeus, his wife, his kids, probably grandkids, all of them came to know the Lord that day because Jesus took the time out of his busy schedule to stop by a place called Jericho for one man who had climbed a tree that said, I want to see Jesus. We tell you, God answered that prayer above and beyond. I don't think Zacchaeus had in his mind what kind of effect was going to happen that day at his house. I'm going to read you one story, then I'm going to close. Let me find it on here. How many thankful for God's grace? I'm going to read this story to you real, real quick, and I'm going to close. 
Jesus saw Zacchaeus sitting in a sycamore tree and he understood the symbolism. He says first, I've already discussed it, that it was shameful for a grown man to climb a tree and yet there was Zacchaeus. This shows that us that Zacchaeus did not mind being mocked if it meant seeing Jesus. Jesus became more important than his pride. Second, let's consider the sycamore tree. In the Middle East, it produces a fig-like fruit. The unripe fruit was inedible due to its bitter taste, and if left alone to ripen, it would remain unedible due to the presence of wasps and other insects growing inside. The solution was to pierce or wound the fruit. The fruit of the sycamore was pierced for two reasons. Hear me on this. Number one was to ripen the figs in as short of a time as possible. Did you hear what I said? The purpose of piercing the fruit was to ripen the figs in as short time as possible. And number two, it was to stop the growth of any insects in the fruit. Jesus is walking to Jerusalem, and he sees Zacchaeus in a sycamore tree, most likely sitting next to the sycamore fig, which is bitter fruit that is left alone to its own ruin. Jesus, knowing all about sycamore figs, chose to pause his trip to Jerusalem in order to pierce Zacchaeus' heart with an act of his amazing grace so that Zacchaeus is now a blessing to others. Isn't that beautiful? And we just thought it was a silly tree growing in the middle of town that Zacchaeus climbed. Who knew there was symbolism that fruit left on its own will ruin. But Jesus said, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Wow. He come to seek and to save. He told Mary, his mother Mary, and he told Joseph when they lost him, when they lost him in the town, and they finally found him, where? In the Father's house. He said these words, he said, don't you know that I must be about the Father's business. Church, you and I have a responsibility today. And that's to be about the Father's business because there's more Zacchaeuses sitting in the sycamore trees today wanting to know who Jesus is. Let us pray. Father, we love you. If we get our musicians to come back. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your great love. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace, Lord, who does not leave us unattended, but you come to our very house. You call us by name. Father, you deal with our hearts. You do spiritual surgery, and you reveal what's on the inside. In Zacharias' case, Lord, it was corruptness. It was theft, it was robbery, it was lying, cheating, and the whole city knew it. They called him a sinner. Lord, but you, you came to where Zacchaeus was. Lord, you didn't see Zacchaeus as a problem, but you saw him as a product of your mission. Father, I pray this morning, help us as the church not to see people as a problem, but help them to see a product of our missionary work, of our evangelism. God, help us to disciple. God, help us to reach the lost at all costs. God, I pray that you'll strengthen us, stir our hearts this morning. 
Lord, to go out and to evangelize and to win this great community, Lord, that we live in. Lord, as we pray, Lord, as we pray that the same Jesus that passed by Jericho, the same Jesus that passed by the pool, the, the well at Bethesda, Lord, is the same Jesus who's going to pass by Yell Assembly. Father, stir our hearts today. Lord, quicken us, prompt us, convict us. Father, we ask all of this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Could you play that just as I am again? I felt the Holy Spirit give me this song as we've not done it in many months. But I felt the Holy Spirit bring it to my remembrance. And I wanted to play it before the sermon. And I want to play it after. That you can come just as you are. As Zacchaeus put away his pride. Zacchaeus put away what people thought about him. He laid it all aside that he may win Christ. He laid it all aside that he may have a relationship with Christ Jesus. Just as I am, without one plea, I'm going to ask this morning, as I've unburdened my heart with this message today of truth and hope, if there is one here today who doesn't know Jesus, if that is you that I've been talking to, if that is you that Jesus has been dealing with, and I've got a feeling that it's not just been today but I got a feeling that Jesus has been dealing with your heart for some time if you be willing if you be obedient you'll have an encounter with Jesus I'm going to ask if that is you or if that is several this morning if you'll to ease out of your seat like I did at 16 years of age as Zacchaeus ran, he climbed that sycamore tree. I'm going to ask you if you'll ease up out of your seat and walk down this aisle. I promise you, I'll meet you here. I'll meet you at this altar. I will meet you there. If you need Jesus this morning, you're not alone, church. There's going to be a group of people that's going to love you. It's going to pray for you. It's going to encourage you. But as Zacchaeus made a choice, as Zacchaeus made a choice, he said, i got to see Jesus. He had to have faith. He had to have faith in action. Same requirements today, folks. We're saved by grace through faith. It's through the grace of God, by faith, that we're saved. These altars are open, and for someone who will walk this aisle, I'll meet you there. I can't make the decision for you, but I'll sure help you along the journey. I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to walk down. As my grandpa did, my grandpa stepped off the stage, and he met me as I walked down that morning. There was a renewal. And there was a restoration that took place. I was a new creation. I was born again. Is there anyone in the house? As I said, there's a window of opportunity. Like that 12-year-old boy, if he would have missed it, if he hadn't have taken that window of opportunity, he might have split hell wide open. How about it this morning, church? Are you ready to meet Jesus? Young, old? Are you ready to meet Jesus? I'm about to close. See, know this this morning. That as it's with Christ, a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. But Jesus lets us know that his Father is not slack concerning his promises. That it's not God's will that any should perish but that all should come under repentance. 
Sometimes, sometimes God, God's mercy extends. He's patient. He's long-suffering to allow others to come in to further enlarge the kingdom of God by just one more saint, one more sinner coming home. I'm fixing to close. I'm fixing to close. How about your heart this morning? Is it right with God? Is it right with God? Father, I pray the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, as you deal, as you convict our hearts this morning, Lord, that we'll make the right choice, that we'll make that right decision. Lord, you said, whosoever will, let him call upon the name of the Lord, and he shall be saved. Father, we're believing this morning. We're believing, God, help us to be soul winners. Lord, help us to be re-engaged, Lord, in a soul-winning church, in a soul-winning atmosphere, Lord, a soul-winning revolution, Lord, for the town of Yale this morning. Father, prompt us as the body of Christ. Prompt us as a church this morning. Father, we love you and we give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is so good, God is so gracious, and God is so kind. I love you this morning, church. I love you. Just know this. I'll say it again in closing. Either people are going to meet him as Savior, or they're going to meet him as judge. That's straightforward truth. Straightforward truth. I know Brother Jim needed some prayer this morning. For his health this morning. Brother Jim, if you'd come down this morning, if you feel like it, thank you for being here. He put forth, Jim put forth a lot of effort to be here this morning. No, he didn't feel good, but he said, I'm going to church. Folks, that's faith right there. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I'm going to call for the men of the church this morning. I'm going to call for the men to come gather around Brother Jim. We're going to lay hands upon him this morning. We're going to believe. Is anybody else needs prayer? right now the time if you still want to repent these altars are open for repentance if you still feel like you need to be saved come on down this morning these altars are still open this morning God is still here he's still dealing with people he's still dealing with people still dealing with hearts this morning just believe God just trust God this morning hallelujah father we love you come here brother Jim let's get right on in here this morning help me pray for him brother Father, we thank you for Brother Jim's faith this morning. Father, and it's our prayer right now. He's going to have an encounter with you today, Lord. Father, he's going to have a fresh encounter just like the man that was a palsy. Just like the blind man that walked away seeing just like the lame man walked away leaping and jumping and praising the Lord at the gate beautiful. Lord, they had an encounter with you. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit of God right now that you'll touch Brother Jim. Lord, in his physical body this morning, Lord, that you'll touch this old heart, these chest pains. Lord, take away, remove the source, Lord, of what's causing this infection today, Lord. Lord, in his kidneys today, I plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we sang about the blood this morning, Lord, and we know the blood has not lost its power. The blood has not lost its power. Lord, we believe right now by the word of the Lord, he shall be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you said if we ask anything according to your will, it shall be done. Lord, we're asking right now to receive. Lord, we're believing right now for Brother Jim's health, his healing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, his well-being, his well-being right now. Father, we thank you for the healing. Oh, my Lord. Just bless him and pray right now for him, man. Just bless him right now. Pray the prayer of faith. Speak words of life over him. Hallelujah, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, touch our men this morning. 
Lord, touch our men this morning. Lord, these men of faith, Lord, that you will bless their walk. Lord, that they too may have an encounter with you this morning, Lord. Lord, that they may too have an encounter, Lord, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that they too may enjoy the presence of the mighty God who lives and reigns and dwells within them this morning. Father, bless your people this morning. Father, we thank you for the hand of God. Thank you for the hand of God, for the mighty hand of God. Lord, we bless you for it, God. We bless you for it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Worship for me just as I am. we're going to believe we are believers we are believers we believe the word of God we believe the word of God lay hands on the sick and they shall recover not if maybe so hope so it says they shall that's a promise I need some Holy Ghost filled women who's going to pray the prayer of faith in the mighty name of Jesus Father, we thank you. Linda, the scripture is, the scripture is no weapon that is formed against you. Your body shall prosper in the name of Jesus. He bore your stripes. He took your spermities. And my God, my God, he is the healer of our bodies right now. And by your faith, the faith shall save the sick. Glory to God. Father, we thank you right now for the healing hand of God. Lord, the healing hand of God right now as you bless Sister Linda, her complete body, every wit whole, every wit whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray Linda too will have an encounter. I pray that Linda too will have an encounter, Lord, with the healer. This, woo, my Lord, my Lord. Woo, my, Father, we're believers this morning. Lord, we're believing for the extraordinary. Lord, we're believing for the super. My Lord, my Lord. Woo, my Lord, like the woman with the issue of blood. Who touched me? Who touched me? Who touched me? Glory to God. Woo, my Lord, my Lord. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you, Lord, by the grace of God. By the wonderful grace of God. The healer, Lord, the healer is passed by. The healer is passing by. The healer is passing by. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your people, Lord. Bless your daughters, Lord. Bless your daughters this morning, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch Tammy and her family, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless your families, Lord. Bless Sister Charlotte this morning. Lord, we plead the blood that she too will have an encounter.
Praise God. Sing it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as I am. Sing it again, Brenda. Let us just come to the master this morning. He said, come unto me. Come unto me. Come unto me. Come unto me this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. Holy Spirit prompts. Holy Spirit draws. Holy Spirit pour into our hearts. Glory to God. Glory to God. We just lift our hands toward heaven this morning. Just picture in your mind, Zacchaeus, what effort he put in, what engagement he had to run and to climb that he may see. Father, this morning, prompt us this morning to action. Lord, that we may see the glory of God. Lord, that we may encounter, Lord, that healing hand. Lord, that we may experience that rebirth experience. Lord, that we may experience your love and peace and joy as never before. Father, that we may encounter revival, Lord, in our very individual hearts. Lord, and as a corporate church this morning, Lord, we pray for a renewal in our house. Lord, a family coming in, God, we pray for a complete restoration, Lord, and a repenting, repenting heart today. Father, we, bl- we press in. Lord, we press in to have an encounter. Father, we bless you and we love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell your neighbor you love them this morning. Thank you for coming today. Remember services tonight. Prayer rooms at 530. Men's meeting at 430. Service at 6. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.